Hi, I'm Cody Robert Judy, and this is a voice crying in the wilderness. Repent, prepare ye for the coming of the Lord. Today is 9-11-2018. 9-11, September 11th, 2001. America's witnessed one of the most horrific attacks on U.S. soil in United States history. If we wanted to look at the good that came out of that without assigning blame, could we not say that America developed more of a patriotism than it had had in the past. That is one thing that concerns me great, greatly. In fact, I wear a Super Bowl ring, the Patriot Super Bowl ring. It says in the inscription, we are all patriots. And then on the inside subscription, it says the greatest comeback. Two thousand two. The New England Patriots came back and won the Super Bowl when they were behind. Greatest comeback. That's what my candidacy would be if you write my name in for U.S. Senate and step up, Utah. You know, one of the hardest things to do is recognize your mistakes and to confess those. But if you don't believe in that, basically don't believe that there was any need for a savior who suffered for our sins and our mistakes. If we would repent or change and do those sins no more. Well, in 2008, a great sin happened. And it happened in the upper echelons of our government. In fact, it happened in the U.S. Senate. All the U.S. Senators voted for non-binding Senate Resolution 511, which was a statute of law, but it declared Senator John McCain, the late Senator John McCain, a natural born citizen. It was non-binding. It didn't count constitutionally. And they tried nine times since 2000 to change the natural born citizen clause of the office of the president found in article 2 section 1 clause 5 why did they try to change it if the definition wasn't US citizens having a child born in one of the states born in the United States to U.S. citizen parents. John McCain had two acts of Congress on his citizenship. I'm a natural born citizen. I don't need two acts of Congress to tell me I was born in the U.S. to U.S. citizen parents. And there is no question whatsoever. I'm a natural born citizen. The fact that John McCain had two acts of Congress 
let you know that he questioned his own citizenship. He believed he wasn't a natural born citizen. So we tried to change it. Tried to change it in 2000. It failed. They tried eight more times. It failed. Barack Obama was not a U.S. citizen, or U.S. natural born citizen. He was not a natural born citizen. He was not born in the U.S. to U.S. citizen parents. In fact, he admits that. He had a foreign father born in Kenya, and he received from that father a statutory citizenship from Kenya. Now, Kenya has a natural born citizen clause that is very strict and it therein states that you have to be born in Kenya to Kenyan citizen parents. Barack Obama could not run for president in Kenya. He would not be qualified because he has an American mother. <coughs> now if Kenya is that strict on their office of the president, what makes you think that there's not good cause in protecting the office of the president? with a two-generation wall. Now, how much is that worth? Well, let's think about that for a minute. How much is it costing to build a wall on the southern border of the United States? And how much has Congress allocated for that already? Now, if you build a wall on the southern border of the United States to keep out foreigners or to funnel them through a legal door a legal door how much good does it do to compromise the office of the president for an enemy within the US president's office is the worst kind of enemy you could have an alien in the office of the president called the usurpation and if you have an enemy in the office of the president you have a really big problem and we are seeing that Barack Obama was a very big problem he promoted trade agreements which compromised America which encouraged slave labor. It encouraged our corporations to go over to foreign soil, set up factories, employ slave labor, slave labor, rather than put Americans to work at minimum wage. It encouraged, he encouraged corporations to go across seas, build factories, employ slave labor, that did not enforce work place environments, safe working place environments, and certainly did not have to pay health care. Those policies which encouraged slavery were also encouraged in his domestic policies. He forced people to buy health care at a penalty. Something that went clear to the U.S. Supreme Court. He also compromised every single America, American in the debt it incurred during 
his presidency. We incurred $10 trillion of debt. And that translated into selling every single American, man, woman, and child, for $70,000. And he says he's not for slavery. All of his pol policies indicated a retribution, a grudge against America's freedom and liberty. It promoted the slavery. And it encouraged corporations to take our jobs across the seas and bring them back and make them pay so the corporations could make a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred percent profit. So don't tell me that Democrats under Barack Obama were not encouraging slavery, that they were not encouraging a generational theft. We're selling Americans down the road, selling our children down the road, not caring about what happened in this country. And Barack Obama and Senator McCain both spoke out against nationalism. Well, what is nationalism but patriotism for your country? And they say patriotism is dangerous. Why? Because the patriotism for one's country demands that you stand up and defend your country. They didn't want that. That's why they put a negative note on patriotism. And they used the worst example that they could find, Hitler. Oh, World War II was, was founded in patriotism. Well, Hitler's nationalism was much different than American nationalism. Hitler's nationalism took over countries and took over borders, eliminated them for a Germany. That is what Barack Obama's policies were encouraging. They were encouraging an imperialism over America, over our Constitution. That is something Americans have to stand up against. And then if they did, Obama says you're clinging to your guns, your religion. And he desecrated all of the hallmarks that create patriotism and a healthy American nationalism. And he's at it again. He hasn't stopped. You know, in the news the last couple of days, China ordered a church to install cameras for the government and the state in their church building. And they refused. And China boasts of free speech. They say there's free religion, there's free speech. But they encouraged, and they in fact ordered cameras to be installed so they could watch and see and hear everything. And then when the church refused, what did China and their leadership, imperialistic leadership do? Well, they shut the church down and made the church's doctrine an illegal propaganda. That they 
construed as dangerous to the state. Now in America, we have a First Amendment that allows free speech, freedom of the press, prohibits uh, the state from combining with any particular religion. And I suffered a violation of that when the LDS Church combined with the state in framing evidence used against me in a court of law. The church presidency, the LDS church presidency, copyrighted the tape. They gave it to the prosecutor, they gave it to, the prosecutor gave it to the judge, but they denied that to me as evidence in my defense. huge violation. Now, sharing the gospel and sharing good principles ought to be encouraged by politicians. Why should good be withheld from the public? Especially when it is history, which the Bible is. So is the Book of Mormon. Mormons will claim that. I'm not LDS. I'm not any particular religion. I have encouraged people to come out of the churches because the churches are wicked. They are not, they are preaching the Lord's word, but their hearts are far from the Lord. They would support the U.S. Constitution. They would have defended me. KTVX, Channel 4, actually spent $10,000 trying to get the tape from the Board of Pardons and Parole because it was used in a court of law as evidence. And, and the Utah State Board of Pardons and Parole used the same argument that the prosecutor and the judge used, claiming it was church copyright. That is a secret combination and the violation specifically in the state court was a confirmation of an illegal union between church and and state violation of the First Amendment we're also given the right of freedom to assemble and that right by China has been denied to those people that were in that church and refused the camera in the church that was ordered by the state <clears throat> the reason I use those comparisons is because we're living in a very dangerous time where the state seeks to control everything. Even our universities are being turned into non-free speech areas. In fact, they've got free speech zones that are in little corners now. You can't speak freely anywhere on the campus. One girl recently in the state of Utah had the courage she was handing out little valentines with a bible verse on it and the security of the campus came to her and told her she could not do that she says that's a violation of my free speech and they said you're not in a free speech zone Well, she means over there where no one, no one walks. Basically, you can't communicate with other people that you pass by. And that is setting up a terrible precedent in the United States of America. A terrible precedent. 
or once our universities or institutions of the United States Constitution. Now they are public interventions against the United States Constitution. One of the reasons I'm running for president or U.S. Senate, <laughs> one of the things I did run, one of the reasons I did run for U.S. President in 2008, 2012, and 2016 was specifically to uphold the equity of the law, the equity of the United States Constitution overall. Instead of the segregation that we're seeing where we have one law for common people and another law for the elite who think that they are above the law. Who think they can make the law but excuse themselves. That's not equal justice under the law. What does our Pledge of Allegiance say? A Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. That's the supreme law of the land, the Constitution Republic. That's what we live in, which is one law over all. And to the Republic for which I stand, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, why, why, how is it fair? How is it fair that if you get in trouble, you want the Constitution, you want the laws of evidence speaking for you. You want the evidence that's used against you. And to be able to use that evidence the same way as the prosecution is using it. In the day of trouble, that is when people want the U.S. Constitution. That is when they care. Quite frankly, I understand that better than anybody, which is why when I came out of prison, I used the 15th Amendment. Voting rights shall not be withheld on the account of race, color, or prior servitude. And if you can vote, you can run for office if you qualify for that particular office. Why did John McCain try to change the law? in the office of the president. Well, he wanted to make himself qualified rather than recognize and honor the law. He chose to subvert it when he couldn't change it. He said, we'll just subvert it with a non-binding Senate resolution and we'll put it out on all the media and the media will shove it down the public's throat Puff, poof, the law has changed. Well, you need two thirds of Congress to change the Constitution, not a non binding Senate resolution for the Boy Scouts of America. I recognize it is difficult to recognize the sins of those that you have supported, those that you had voted for. I recognize how hard that is. A vote for me is a recognition of truth and justice. Truth? If you can't handle the truth, if you can't handle the fact that the corporation of the LDS Church Presidency has under its copyright the exact event that I served in prison for 3,018 days. And I was withheld that as a defendant. I didn't want to sue Gordon B. Hinckley and the church presidency.
but I recognized that they were wrong. They don't want to recognize that. I didn't want to sue Senator McCain for not being qualified for the office of the president, but he had two statutory laws by Congress that first made him a citizen and then second made him a natural born citizen. I'm a natural born citizen. I don't need two acts of Congress to tell me that. That's the truth. I didn't want to sue Senator Barack Obama, but he wasn't born in the U.S. to U.S. citizen parents. And there was a five year lawful investigation conducted by a law enforcement agency for five years that documented precisely that the long form birth certificate that he rolled out in the White House was a fabrication. They stole somebody else's identity. That's a crime. And the media wouldn't cover it that way. Why? Why wouldn't the media cover it? Because they wanted to use racial demagoguery against the American people. They wanted to make a division. They didn't want a more perfect union. They didn't want to stand up for truth and justice. They couldn't handle the truth. He was not qualified. Oh, but he's talented. He could use a teleprompter. He could speak well. And we could use 200 years of white guilt, which most didn't have anything to do with in slavery. Well, they don't want to talk about black people owning slaves at the same period of time. They don't want to talk about that because they want to use racial demagoguery. And what did my candidacies in 2008, 2012, and 2016 show an example of? Everybody under the same law and the qualifications for president, born in the U.S. to U.S. citizen parents, natural born citizen, or a citizen at the time of the adoption of this constitution. That was a new jurisdiction of law that came in. The United States Constitution in the United States of America that represented a more perfect union. Yes, we have the ability to make a more perfect union, but there have been sins, mistakes, grave mistakes made by those who have been elected. And the media has helped them cover it up. That is why there is a need for the weakest muscle in the body politics, the write-in candidacy. That is why there's a need when both major parties have strayed so far away from the Constitution, they've desecrated it and upheld enemies within the United States. They've upheld foreigners more than they had upheld the citizens. And you don't think you need protections. It's easier to con conquer an enemy from without. But when the enemy comes and is within, that is the greatest danger a 
the American fall. And it would not be an injustice. It would be because justice was demanded for those mistakes and sins. And America wouldn't change. Well, Utah has a chance now with my candidacy for U.S. Senate. I'm asking Utah to step up out of hell, to be an example as a standard for the nation, to be an ensign for America, that they can see through this, that they can handle the truth. Not like Jack Nicholson said in A Few Good Men, you can't handle the truth. I want Utah to say, yes, we can. Yes, we can. I don't want you to step down any lower. I want you to step up. It's a good campaign slogan. I noticed President Trump said step up about three or four times in one of his campaign speeches within the last few days. I want Utah, citizens of Utah, to step up and use the weakest muscle. Conf the Lord says when we confess our weaknesses, He will make them our strengths. And who of you would sacrifice the weakest muscle in your body, having it removed, and think that it would not affect your entire body? Who of you, understanding that when you get the flu or when you get your, a headache, that the entire body is affected? That's what happens when your leaders don't stand up for the law, when they excuse themselves. Please excuse me, but don't excuse them. Utah has a chance to confess their weaknesses and then through that confession, their weaknesses become their strengths. That is an awesome promise. If you support my campaign, support the truth and support justice, because that's what my campaign is about. There would be no need for my campaign as a write-in candidate if truth and justice were being upheld. There would be no need for my campaign for U.S. Senate if all the judges were righteous and making righteous or correct decisions. That's the fall of many nations, the lawyers and judges, hypocrites of the law, instead of defenders and proponents of the law in equity, equal justice. Has Hillary Clinton been prosecuted? for national top secret emails being given to the enemy? Has she been prosecuted for selling out America? Has Nancy Pelosi been prosecuted for disenfranchising the state of Hawaii's democratic chair, the state of Hawaii's Democratic Party, 
disenfranchised because they would not certify Barack Obama as qualified under the U.S. Constitution and their law they stood up for and demanded. Nancy Pelosi disenfranchised that with her signature certifying Obama as the nominee. She took over the state of Hawaii. She usurped the state of Hawaii. Nancy Pelosi did. That's not all she did. But those evidences and that truth is had in my cases that I took clear to the U.S. Supreme Court. 12, 52, 76, 14, 93, 96. And in the 10th Circuit right now, there's a courtesy copy that Justice Gorsuch has been sent in the U.S. Supreme Court. They received it. They acknowledged receiving it. But they would not give it a case number. That's a cover-up. That's a cover-up of the highest order. Yes, America has a potential for a more perfect union, but it involves at least the cover of the United States of America's Constitution, supreme law of the land, equity and justice for all, the republic for which we stand, we don't have that in the day of trouble in the day of your trouble can you really say oh my god right now Hurricane Florence is barreling up the east coast in a path ready to hit North Carolina and South Carolina and Virginia turned into a category 4 we got satellites up there pictures of it and they see the warning because they believe the satellite images 